Hey guys, Brian here, and before we go to the game, I just want to um, tell, say a few quick things about the um, the new commentary thing I did on the yesterday's video. Um, let me tell you the reason why I that idea popped in my head. Like um, for the beach videos, I've noticed that when I've made like comments in like um, captions in the videos about the thinking behind my moves, I got a lot of good comments saying people really love that, and um, I you know. The, but the thing is, those captions, like, if I were to make a caption for every single move I did, it's so, like, time-consuming to make in the video editor, right? It's such a pain in the butt. So, you know, I thought um, commentating on the game using just the voiceover would be better. And um, another reason for the commentary is that there was a chess video that went viral uh, recently. And um, the reason why it went viral was because of the commentary. It wasn't... The, the, the chess video didn't go viral because... Um, um, it was just two people playing in silence, you know, it went viral because of commentary and the reason why it went viral The reason why it spread was because the commentary kind of um, was helped the audience understand what was going on in the game and it made it exciting So that's the reason why I think commentary is important to help get, you know, chess mainstream I think it's really easy for chess players to like, you know just think about and just be in their own head and assume that you know oh i like it this way so it should be like this just for me but you gotta remember like a lot of people out there you know they you know they know the piece how the pieces move they know a little bit of opening theory but you know the commentary really helps them understand what's going on in the game and it makes it more exciting for them and i think having the commentary also shows like the beauty of, of chess like the beauty of the ideas of what's going on and um if you listen to my commentary yesterday, I was trying to um, make it like mainstream. Like when you hear grandmasters commentate, you know, um, I, I, you know, how, how do I say this? I think, I think it's great for like a really good chess player, but for for like a mainstream chess player, they are talking way too fast. They are naming squares like, like left and right. They're going into fifty different variations, and the viewer is completely lost. Like when I was doing the commentary yesterday. Um, you know, I try to make it really simple, okay? He moved here, this is a threat. This is, you know, what he has to do. This is the idea behind this move. This is the idea behind that move. So I try to make it really simple and easy to understand. And um, also I want to note that obviously I'm not going to comment during the games where people are trash talking. Um, the game yesterday, nobody was trash talking. It was very silent, so I just filled it with commentary. But uh, yeah, I just want to um, tell you guys that. And um yeah, I think it's important to try new things, to have the courage to do so and just put it out there and see what happens. And it looks like um, the video got 40% more likes than usual. And looking at the comments, about 80% loved the commentary and 20% didn't like it, which is understandable because it can't please everybody. So um, for this video, what I'm going to do is just comment. I'm not going to like comment on both players. I'm just going to comment what's going on inside my head. So it won't be, um, there's going to be like a lot of pauses. It'll be really short. And um, maybe this is a, a good hybrid. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm just going to try something new again. Let me know what you think and uh, enjoy the game. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Sam, you ready? All right, guys. Uh, this time, instead of doing third person commentary, yeah, I'm just going to um, comment what was going on inside my head during this game. So I'm giving up a pawn, but I'm getting a faster development for compensation for my bishop with uh, my bishop taken there. And um, here comes my other bishop, spinning my bishop. He takes recapture. I notice I have four pieces here developed compared to his two. So um, black is rapidly developed here. And I'm um, here I'm deciding whether to castle king or queen side, so I castle queen side. Makes the game always more spicy if you have uh, opposite side castle. So here I'm thinking of ways to um, punish him for not castling yet. So he uh, asked the question to my bishop and I'm um, Trying to think of how I can exploit it. You know, I, don't, I think it's too late to exploit it, but just gotta come up with a plan and blitz. You know, bad plan is better than no plan at all.
So I take knowing that he's going to take with this bishop and now I can bring my rook into the game. Obviously he can block but the purpose is gives me time to uh, move my rook into the game. And notice I've castled and my rooks are connected. I've got three pieces developed. He only has two pieces developed and he's not castled. So white is behind in development. And if you want to pause the video, there actually is a tactic here. I spent some time here and I thought it looked good, but um, I decided against it because I calculated, um, because I thought it could be refuted. But it actually, it can't, it can't be refuted. It's good, you just gotta double check it. So pause the video and see if you can find it. And obviously I'll tell you what it is uh, in the after analysis game, so. Okay, queen moves, threatening mate. Obviously he can pawn push, but um, you know, it's always good to kind of loosen the pawns in front of your, uh, in front of the opponent's king. And um, it's natural instinct to move the queen out of danger, but I always look for those intermezzo moves. I took his bishop um, because the, it looks like the game's going to be open, so I wanted my bishop to be superior to his knight. So uh, he's tempoing my queen here. And um, I decided not to exchange because I'm down a pawn, so I'm going to save my queen. moves over and it looks like he can snap up the pawn but um, my bishop can fork the queen and the knight so he can't do it yet he's got to defend his knight first which he does and then I uh, just push to uh, save the pawn he brings his rook in tempo the queen and he decides to take and there's a saying in chess like to take is a mistake because when you take you allow your opponent to um, develop and now I control that file. So my plan is pretty clear for me. Um, I'm going to snap up all those pawns on, the, on my queen side. I'm going to march up my uh, A pawn. And uh, White's plan is probably to sn snatch up all the pawns on the other side on my king side and uh, push his pawns to glory. And um, at this point I'm getting a little nervous because the queen and the knight are kind of getting near my king so I just create some luft. King safety is very important so it's always good to spend time to uh, make sure your, your king has an escape route. Ooh. That is a great move by Sam. I can't take the pawn because it's a poison pawn. He has a discovered check, and it's a discovered attack on my queen. So if I take that pawn, my queen's gone. Now that his queen and knight are kind of getting uncomfortably close, I'm just going to max protect. I don't, I don't like playing defense, but sometimes you just gotta do it, you know. Take the pawn. It's interesting he did this because at first I thought it was a blunder, but if you look at his body language, there's like no... He doesn't seem surprised, same plan, so that's kind of interesting. And just because I'm up the exchange doesn't mean this game is necessarily won. I mean, knights can be extremely tricky in blitz. It can, they can create all sorts of crazy forks, so... The game's not over. Can't trust the computer valuation because a computer assumes you're going to play the good moves, but remember, these are two humans playing, so... Anything can happen. Alright, so I'm forking the uh, knight in the pawn, but I'm going to kick the knight out so I can grab the pawn that it's defending. 
I'm gonna clean up those center pawns and then march my A pawn to victory. That's kind of my plan right now. Okay, obviously my rook's in danger, but I got the check first. Then I can kind of swing my rook over and start having threatening some mates, but he doesn't see the check and boom. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Good game, Sam. Yeah, Good game. Oh god. I'm done. Yeah, you play fast, man. Yeah. You're ahead of me on yeah. time. <laughs> hey guys, Brian here, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the game. So let's quickly go over it to see all the uh, missed opportunities so we can learn from them. Uh, first one that popped up was, um, let's go move back. Knight develops and goes up, up, you know, computer validation goes up a bit. And when you see that computer validation go up a little bit like that, it means, um, it, it can mean a couple things like it, you can swipe a pawn or the computer finds like a 20 move line that allows better position, but in this case, it's simply taking the pawn. And uh, I guess it depends on how you play chess. Some people are pawn grabbers, you know, they love to grab pawns. And um, me, I, mm, maybe because I got burned in the past, like grabbing pawns too early and having my queen trapped, I, I don't like it. You know, I don't like taking the pawn and kind of having to move back. But yeah, I mean, if you're a pawn grabber, by all means, go for the pawn grab. So there's one right there. And um, Let's go to the second um, tactic. So white castles and the computer violation jumps. So there is a tactic here. And um, if you want to pause the video and find it, and uh, I'll give you a hint, um, like I did in the uh, game, it's it's there, and you just gotta double check the calculation. Okay, so one of the ways to, one of the best moves to make in chess is if one move does a lot of things. So, queen e5 threatens mate, also triples up on this bishop that's only defended twice. And I think, I remember when I was playing, I, I kind of saw this in my head and I was thinking, um, obviously I'm not going to take with the queen because I'm going to lose it, so I'm going to take with the knight. But then this rook can come here and pin. So that's kind of why I dismissed the idea in my head, but the key is, I should have thought about it twice. When the knight takes, it takes with check, so the rook doesn't have time to um, pin, the, uh, pin the knight, so the tactic actually does work. So, the continuation, um, white must, you know, push to um, avoid mate, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, and if rook tempos, just trade off the queens. And you can trade off the rooks too if you want, and it's pretty simple from here. So that was the tactic, and um, let's go to um, let's go here in this position. Um, interesting to see why he did. Um, if you looked at his body language in the video, he didn't seem surprised, so maybe he did it on purpose. Um, not sure. But, um, you know, the game isn't over just because um, um, I'm up the exchange. These knights can be very tricky and can, can fork stuff, and I've seen a lot of people lose games like that, so um, can't really trust this computer evaluation because the players are human. But let's go back, and what, what, what was the move he should have made? He should have took the queen, right? He should have uh, snapped up the pawn here. And then I was really curious to see, oh, this is like a cool continuation. So like um, my plan in the game was to kind of clean up these things and push the pawn, right? Push this pawn to glory. But I, I just, for the heck of it, put put it in the computer to see what will pop up. And this is what pops up. So the A pawn advances. The queen starts grabbing pawns because white would want to start marching his pawn down. Here comes the black pawn. Here comes the knight trying to uh, catch it. And here comes the pawn advancing, and notice the computer evaluation jumping in favor of white, not black. White's going to take the last pawn, and uh, bishop is going to move out of danger because it's being attacked twice. Only defended once, and here is, if you want to pause the video and find the tactic for white, it's pretty cool. 
Queen sack, baby. Queen sack. And if king takes, boom. What a beautiful mate. So, uh, like, pretty cool line to see. Um, but let's see what would have happened um, after the game. Uh, let's see. I think we got into this position with the check, right? And then he, uh, I think he moved his knight and he's hung his king. So let's see what would have happened um, in this position. King moves back. Now the rook's in danger, right? So I'm going to swing the rook and try to get some mates here. But, um, and knight's going to block. And also, he's got this check in, so I got to take the pawn and defend. Knight jumps back to defend the king. Got the check. King kind of hides in the corner. Here comes the pawn push. Trade off the pawns. The knight goes back. Here comes the rook, threatening mate. So uh, knight defends, takes, checks, goes in the cubby hole. Another check, blocks the check. And um, white is going to defend this mating square. And um, if you guys want to see a cool pawn race, just sack everything. Boom, 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 boom. And white is one tempo too late. So just want to show you that's got a continuation. But I guess the the lesson to take away from this game would probably be trust your intuition, trust the tactics, and um, don't don't toss the tactic away because um, you, you assume it won't work. Like double check your calculations and make sure that the tactic won't work. And that's what I should have done in this game. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, see you guys later.